some of the smartest people in history have, said, have, have, have thought about it and said like free speech is important for a, for a healthy democracy, it is important. And free speech only matters. Like say, when does free speech matter most? It's when, someone, when it's someone you don't like saying something you don't like. That's when it actually matters. You know, can't, obviously, and, 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 and it's, pr it's pretty annoying when someone you don't like says something you don't like. That's bad, but it's actually a good sign of that, that you have free speech. So, um, I mean, I get trashed by the media all the time. It's fine. I don't care. Uh, go, do, do it twice as much. I couldn't care less. Um, but it's indicative of the fact that even though um, I, you know, I have like a lot of resources, I do not actually have the ability to stop the media from trashing me. And that's actually a good thing. I'm still waiting for uh, some sort of uh, logical explanation for the number of sort of fake or spam accounts on Twitter. Um, and Twitter is, is refusing to tell us. Uh, so this just seems like a strange thing. They claim that they do know. And they claim that they've got this complex methodology uh, that only they can understand if they in fact uh, have been vociferously claiming less than 5% of fake or spam accounts, but in fact it is 4 or 5 times that number or perhaps 10 times that number, this is a big deal. Um, it's not this, it, it's sort of like if you said, okay, I agree to buy your house. You say the house has less than 5% termites. That's uh, that's an acceptable number. But if it turns out it is 90% termites, that's uh, <laughs> not okay, you know? It's not the same house. So, it, it, you know, that, that would obviously just not be appropriate. So in, in making the Twitter offer, I was obviously reliant upon the, the truth and accuracy of their public filings. And if those filings are not accurate, it's simply, you can't pay the same price for something that is much worse than they claimed. You know, at the end of the day, acquiring it has to be fixable um, and, and fixable you know, with, re yeah. with reason, reasonable time frame and without revenues collapsing along the way and all, all that sort of stuff. And so I really need to see how it, these things are being calculated. And, and it, it, it can't be some deep mystery that is like more complex than the human soul or something like that. Um, it's got to be. I think we can apply the scientific method to this and try to figure out what's really going on. And um, Twitter's revenue is primarily dependent, I think 70% or some of that order on brand advertising as opposed to specific purchase advertising. This is a big deal because brand advertising is not, it's not a purchase that results from that. So it's basically, you know, how much mind share or like basically if, if you're a big company, how, how often do they hear your name? Um, it's as opposed to something that where you can directly measure the outcome. Um, so that, that means that they're somewhat going on faith. Um, and if that faith is undermined or, or reduced because of the reality of the situation coming to the fore, then Tesla's revenue, or Twitter, start with a T, Twitter's revenue uh, will be uh, significantly impaired. And that's a major problem. I, like I said, I was reliant upon their, their public filings. So to the degree that like, the private public, and this is normal for a public company. If, if you make a formal filing, that is what investors are relying upon, are relying on whether they are making an acquisition offer or simply buying some shares. So this, the accuracy of these filings is important whether you're buying one share or the whole company. And so if these filings are inaccurate, or, or if they're sort of potentially blatant, sure. it's a big deal. The worst interpretation would be that they don't want to look too closely at the thing because they might not like the answer. That would be the worst interpretation. The, the be I'm not sure what the best interpretation is, but the least bad interpretation would be maybe they thought it was this way, but their, the way they were doing it was wrong and they didn't realize they were mistaken and simply weren't paying enough attention. It does seem as though it should be a lot easier to get rid of the bots and, and spam and trolls than uh, it, like this is not some, we're not trying to split the atom here. For those that have used WeChat, I think that's WeChat's actually a good model. If you're in China, it's basically Basically, you kind of live on WeChat. It does everything. Um, it's sort of like Twitter plus PayPal plus a whole bunch of other things and all roll into one with actually a great interface. And it's, it's really an excellent app. And we don't have anything like that um, outside of China. So I think such an app would be really uh, useful. And it just like the utility of sort of a, a spam free thing where you could you can make comments, you can post videos, you can, uh, you know, I think it's important for content creators to have a revenue share. Now, now this, this does not need to be done on Twitter. It could be done from something that's created from scratch. So it's, it could be something new. Um, so really, but, but I think this thing needs to exist, whether it is uh, converting Twitter to uh, be the sort of like kind of all encompassing app that, that like I said, everything from digital town square where important ideas are debated, uh, you know, maximally trusted and inclusive, and at a point where you're, you're, you sort of have a high trust situation, then then payments, uh, uh, whether it's uh, crypto or fiat, 
uh, can, can make a lot of sense. Just we just want something that's incredibly useful and that people love using. Oh. So, but it, it, it's it's either convert Twitter to that or start something new. Those are the two. But it, it does need to happen somehow. My default inclination is to start things from scratch. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not really I don't buy, buy things like there's, there's still this sort of SpaceX was started from scratch. You know, in, in the case of of Tesla, uh, it was like five people. There's still this guy Mark Eberhard, who's the worst guy I've ever worked with, who tries to claim like sole credit essentially for creating a Tesla. And if he's so damn great, why don't he just go, you know, create another car company when he was fired? Which is like, I just want to work on the technology and the product and have someone else be the CEO and 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 sort of run the business operations because I just like working on technology and product and design. And and also I was like doing SpaceX, uh, you know, uh, at the time and our rockets were blowing up. So it seemed like, uh, okay, this is like, I always wanted to do an electric car company. This is how I can have my cake and eat it too. Uh, that was a huge mistake and fundamentally a moral error. In the end, I had to freaking be CEO and I didn't want to be basically. Uh, so, but it's either that or a company's going to die. So, so we started with, with really just nothing. And you know, the, the T0 prototype from AC propulsion, not, not it, it, that's the, that's the precursor to Tesla. Um, yeah. were, to be one half second clear, once again, when we created Tesla, when I joined, there were no, no employees, there was no intellectual property. There was no prototype. There was no nothing.